Good evening, everyone. So nice to have you here, those of you who are here with us in the sanctuary, and all of you who are joining us via Facebook Live and Zoom. We begin our Wednesday evening service here at the North Hollywood Church of Religious Science with a pre-service 10-minute meditation. And so we're going to be playing the God song chant. It's God's the love that I am. And you can either chant along with it or just allow those words to just flow in through your consciousness. And the practice here is to give us an opportunity to become mindful of where our minds want to go. So even if you're engaged in you know, chanting a mantra or listening to the mantra, the mind will tend to wander off Think about the past or the future. And when it does that, this is your opportunity to just observe, notice where the mind went, and really exercise non-judgment. Just notice. Be with that for a moment, and then bring your attention back to the mantra, God's the love that I am. And so let's begin by closing our eyes, Just getting comfortable in our seats. Taking a nice deep breath in and out. God's the love that I am.
And so gently, we bring our awareness back to our surroundings, back into our bodies, maybe wiggling our toes and our fingers, shrugging our shoulders, taking a nice deep breath, and as we release that breath, opening our eyes. So, welcome to anyone who joined us during the meditation. Uh, we're so glad that you're with us this evening for our Wednesday evening service, led by our wonderful Reverend Sidney Lehman Steen. And we're going to begin with our opening chant, led by our awesome Margaret Owens and Sam Krieger. <laughs> Thank you, Margaret and Sam. Hmm. So let's join together in prayer. Turning our attention inward. Knowing that those words, God is in this place, are words that we can call forth at any time. Because truly, God is in every place, in every moment, in every being, that it is the one life, the one power, the one vibration of pure love, infinite intelligence and creativity that impels itself into creation and that its nature lives at the center of all that is. And I know that this evening we join with so many around the globe, our Jewish brothers and sisters who celebrate this high, holy day as it begins, this celebration or holy day of Yom Kippur, a time of turning within, of really taking inventory. It is known as a day of atonement, which metaphysically we often we interpret as at one moment that what prevents us from experiencing that goodness of God that lives within us and expressing it more fully in the world is a false sense of not being at one with God, at one with each other. And I know that this evening, this service absolutely supports us in awakening to that oneness with God. I know that God flows through every element of our time together from the vibration of oneness we feel as we come together as a community in person and virtually, as we feel that vibration of love that has moved all those who are of service this evening to be here, as it absolutely flows and 
inspires us through our music, through Sam and Margaret this evening. And I know that we hear that message from Reverend Sidney that awakens us, that inspires us, that helps us to remember that, yes, God is in this place. God is in me. God is in you. God is everywhere. And we get to experience that more fully as we go forward. And so I give thanks for every blessing that I know we receive during our time together. And in gratitude for that and so much more, I release this word knowing it is already done in the mind of God. This service is blessed. And so it is. And together we say, Amen. So please join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. when I was forgetful. <laughs> there were times when I was empty, when the darkness was prevailing from the shell of my existence. I could feel my spirit ailing, like my soul itself was shattered by the winds of life that knocked me down. Till an ember of your clarity Help me take a look around And say I gotta get the hell out I gotta get the heaven in Cause if it's all a state of mind Then I surely gotta change the state that I'm living in I know Things raining down on me like sunlight from above But I gotta get the hell out of here And bring on the travel chucked your rosy colored glasses just to watch your life unravel cloak yourself in insecurities and you shroud yourself in fear if your view it has been clouded and you want to make it get the heaven in cause if it's all a state of mind then I know you gotta change the state that you're living in trust me there's blessings raining down on you like sunlight from above but you gotta get the hell out of here and bring on the Because love can clear the cobwebs of 
Thank you very much. Oh, my goodness. Got to get the hell out of here and bring on the love. That is so real and so authentic, I think, to what so many people are feeling these days. Like, how do we do this? How do we get the hell out of whatever is going on, either in our personal world or in our collective world in this country or where it may be your families? How do we... Move, how do we break through that? How do we break free into a place where the love finally has room? How do we make ourselves once again, if ever, available to love, available to God, available to wisdom, to being lifted up once again into a place of knowing that peace is the presence, that, as Ernest Holmes said, peace is the power at the heart of God. Last week I talked about Rosh Hashanah and it was, it was really fun to talk. That was my first Wednesday here and I love talking about it because it is the Jewish New Year and there is great power and great, great energy in a new year, in a new beginning, a clean start, a fresh start. And I thought about that because there's a lot around that idea in our languaging, in our cultural languaging. You know, we have all of these this um, verbiage about it, you know, you might hear this, let's start fresh in the morning, or it's a brand new day. Or how about this one? A whole new world with new horizons to pursue. We have all of these ideas about newness and atonement is a wonderful way to approach that. Now, it seems like archaic languaging atonement. It's not something we use. We don't use that word a lot in our daily lives. You're not going to turn on CNN and hear anybody talking about atonement. I'm certain. <laughs> but the idea of atonement is that, so on this day, historically, religiously, spiritually, for the Jewish people, the Jews ask God for forgiveness for their sins to secure their faith. It's also known I didn't know this as the Sabbath of the Sabbaths. It is the holiest day. It is the holiest day because it is the day in which acknowledging and being accountable in order to move into a new beginning can take place, a new beginning, a new idea, a new expression. When we atone for our sins, and I'll get to that word in a moment, so don't, don't run screaming. Someone lock the doors because we're going to talk about sin. So whatever, when we atone, we allow for whatever that action was, and then we move into forgiveness. 
<sighs> now let's unpack sin a little bit. Some of you may know it's an archery term. Um, yes, archery, full-fledged, bow and arrow, hunger games, that whole thing right there. Aim at the target, hit it exactly in the middle. That's archery. Missing the mark, not hitting that bullseye dead center in the middle, that was and probably still is called a sin. So when I was in high school, I took a semester of archery, and I really liked it, but I sinned a lot. I was a sinner. <laughs> oh, and archery too. My husband's here, I have to. Not really, honey. So now bear in mind that both the Old and New Testaments have gone through a lot of cultural transformation and evolution in, in, in generational evolutions. So this word atonement, I think for us, can have a broader context. You heard Reverend Mark speak about at one mint in his opening prayer. For us, it's a tool of reconciliation. Um, Charles Fillmore, who co-founded Unity with his wife, wrote that atonement is the uniting of our limited earthly consciousness with higher consciousness. We are uniting that part of us, the personality part, the judgment part, the, the, the unforgiving part, the one that's keeping score part, which we all do. Come on, you know we do. I do. And we're, but we are stepping away from that. That word repentance means to turn away from. We are stepping away from that so that we can unite with a higher idea. So when we leave behind those earthly ideas that is, have kept us from feeling love, from kept us from feeling peace or wholeness or health or, or joy, when we can repent, turn away from them, don't hear it as in the, in the language of, of an evangelical church because, oh my gosh, we are so not that. But if, if you hear it as that, allow it to have a broader meaning. We turn away from that which has limited us. Our judgments limit us. Our bitterness limits us. Our fear limits us. Our old beliefs limit us. When we turn away and when we cultivate the willingness to recognize our connection with and as creations of spirit, it causes us to turn away from those beliefs and those ideas, those values that have kept us earthbound. That is when we are entering that process of uniting with a higher awareness. It does take intention and it takes practice and it takes the willingness to know that we are part of a greater presence, that it's not just a, a greater idea about a greater presence, it's the whole enchilada. We are part of that greater presence. We are that, and it surrounds and fills us. It saturates us. If I can remember the Rumi quote, it's one of my favorites, and I usually have to ask someone to help me remember it, but it's the idea that we are not a drop, a single drop in the ocean, but we are the entire ocean in a single drop. Every true thing true about that ocean is true about who and what we are. We are all of that. So, until we have united our consciousness with the higher consciousness, we don't have room in our lives. We don't have room in our lives or in our thinking. You know, we live as dualistic beings until we know and we choose that greater reality. So think of it this way, and this, I'm going to come back to <laughs> I'll come back to Yom Kippur, I promise. If I'm in my car and I'm listening to a book on Audible, I can't simultaneously listen to a book, another book on Audible, or from iTunes, or from, from my Kindle library. I, I can't do it. Because my, my car will only play that one channel. When we are connected and united with that one channel, that's the inspiration we get. That's the flood of information we get. That's, ah, that's the love right there. So in other words, my desire to express the radiant health and wholeness that is the nature of God is inconsistent with my desire to eat my weight in Twinkies. <laughs> you know, I wouldn't actually ever do that, but knowing that there is this thing called cause and effect, 
it informs me that my choices have consequences. I could go do that. I could sheet cake all day long and do that, but there's going to be some consequences. I won't feel healthy and energized. I won't be in integrity with my soul's need for balance, my soul's intention for harmony. It just doesn't work that way. Don't you wonder where the hell I'm going with this? <laughs> Okay, Ernest Holmes wrote, uh, wrote this about atonement. The sense in which we use it is that of complete harmony at one moment. So, one of the components of moving from Rosh Hashanah into Yom Kippur is fasting. And the idea is to fast so that you become a vessel undistracted by anything but God. And, by any, and undistracted by anything but the thoughts of what do I need to be cleansed of? What do I need to recognize that is the divine in me, the divine around me? How do I release anything that is standing in the way of that? How do I release that? How can, can I fast from that stuff that is in the way of my perception of God, that is in the way of my perception of wholeness, that is in the way of my perception of love? What do I need to let go of? What do I have to re release? So in Science of Mind and New Thought and Unity, we fast from those limiting ideas that keep us from the presence of God, that keep us from knowing that we are informed and, and held and blessed and absolutely sustained in the presence of God. We fast from, from holding on to anger, judgment, and resentment. We try. It's okay. We, you know, we have to acknowledge we have human selves. It's really important to acknowledge that if somebody ticks you off, that you recognize that's not okay with me. But you don't have to live there. You don't have to live there. In order to move forward and allow that to not be a wall, something that keeps you from God, from love, from joy, it's really important to acknowledge, yeah, you know what? That's not what I want. That is not who I want to be. That's not how I want to react. I don't like what that person did, but that's not a part of me. I'm going to release it and move back into love. Being in harmonious alignment with infinite intelligence and divine love means revealing and letting go of all the stuff that gets in the way of that complete harmony. It means getting, looking at it actually looking at it, bringing it to the light, bringing it to the light so that you can let it go. So in A Course of Miracles, the idea is that when we choose to love, everything that stands in opposition to that love, everything that might be in the way, rises up so that we can recognize it and that we can heal it. It's going to bring it to the surface. It's sort of like being in a honeymoon stage in a relationship. Everything's going really, really great. You're just having the best time. All, everything you're doing just feels like it's infused with, this, with unicorns and pink fairy dust, and it's awesome. But sooner or later, we get tired of that. We, uh, we get tired of the masks sometimes that we have to wear or the, the energy it takes to keep that, that quote unquote magic alive. And many people will think that's when the relationship is over. But that's actually when the holiness begins. That's when the holiness begins. Because that's the point that we become authentic and real and available to God. We become available to God. You know, in a relationship, that's when the deepest healing happens. That's when the deepest growth happens. And all of that is so that together we can rise up so that together we can rise up and bring harmony and love and balance and social justice and access and all of that stuff that we want so much. It's so that we can do that together. But if we are anchored in bitterness and resentment and holding onto grudges or something from the past, then stuff gets in the way of that. You know, we get stuck. We get stuck and so, Resentment gets in the way of our knowing our oneness, not only with God or with spirit or whatever you tend to call this infinite presence, but with each other. And boy, does it show up as separation from each other. Forgiveness is teamed with the idea of judgment. Judgment has to be part of it. 
because when we don't forgive someone or something, we hold on to our judgments about them. We want to keep score. You know, I got to remember why I'm angry at that guy. What was it again? Oh, God, I, I, I know it was something, and it was really big. I'm not, no, that was someone else. No, um, oh, no, she did that. God, what was it? Well, I just know I'm really mad about it. It takes energy to stay angry. It takes commitment to rem remember why. And the other part of that is that bitterness isn't hurting them. It's not like you're getting your, your revenge, your vengeance. It's you. It's hurting you. It's hurting me. And somewhere I remember reading that unforgiveness and bitterness is like swallowing poison and expecting the other person to die. That doesn't work that way. It really doesn't. Now, I'm not advocating you all go out and poison those people who piss you off. I really don't want you to do that. I'm new, but I'm not that crazy. Um, this is why we talk so much here about forgiveness and release. It's because we know that when we do forgive, we have all of this ah, space and spaciousness available to be prosperous, to love, to be healthy, to forgive, and to actually live like the light-filled beings we innately are. We have space available for God. It's just this big, we're no longer holding on. Forgiveness is the process of giving up the false for the true, right? It's the process of giving up the false, the false idea about limitation or that I have to be angry or that this is the way it is in order to go to that greater truth, that there is one life, that life is God, that life is perfect, that life is my life, your life, right here, right now. Forgiveness restores, hmm, let's call it the broken relationship we have with our true divine nature. And it really does mean the giving up of something. We get, when we forgive, we give for, we give for. So we give love for the anger. We give compassion for the resentment. It's an exchange. It's a trade. And it's a really, really good one. When you forgive yourself, you cease doing those things that have buried your true knowing of who you are. It's, forgiveness is like a sort of spiritual exfoliation. OK? It's a spiritual exfoliation. We're, we're brushing off that which is no longer who we are. It probably never was. But this is where we're consciously saying, be gone, be gone. What's here is, what's left is this divine body, this spiritual body, this perfect creation of spirit. It's through, through forgiveness that true spiritual healing is accomplished. It removes the errors of the mind, and the bodily harmony results in consonance with divine law. That's from Ernest Holmes. So when we give up the stuff, we're actually creating a greater bandwidth for love. Think about it. When you're not judging, you have more bandwidth for love. You have more bandwidth for guidance, for inspiration, for possibility. You're not having to recall, oh my God, who, why was I mad at him? <laughs> and how, what was his last name again? Or what was her last name again? What was it that bugged me so much? Now you have like this full range of bandwidth where nothing else is traveling along those fibers to try and get in the way of perception, to get in the way of love, to get in the way of healing, which is ultimately what we want, right? You know, last, last week, I know we talked about, do you want to be right? Do you want to be happy? And everyone goes, oh, if I'm right, I'll be happy. And I want to tell you, maybe for the moment, the ego goes, oh, yes, thank you very much. That works for me. And then once the drama is over, you're still stuck. We don't want to be stuck. We want that spiritual bandwidth to be fully, fully available for love. You know, I've, been, I've spent years working on and perfecting my talents at holding grudges and resentment. Um, I want to say that being passive aggressive is kind of an art form if you do it right. <laughs> Um, I'm gonna, I have to tell you a story about myself. This was, let me think about this. It was years ago. It was probably eight years ago, if I do the math right, which I won't. But it was, I'll say 10 years ago, 
um, my mother, who was in seriously declining health and very, very, what's a good word for it? She needed a lot of support. She needed a lot of support. And she was having, she was sad and she was angry and she was forgetful and she was living with us and needed a lot of attention. And it was really hard. And my husband and I were taking care of her and, and trying to be available. That bell would ring at three in the morning so we'd get up and take her to the bathroom. That bell would ring at 3.15 so we could go back in there and put the sheets back on her. The bell would ring. She had a little bell. I came to hate bells, by the way. That, <laughs> At, at 3.28 because she wanted a glass of water. This went on. And of course, we, we did this because we loved her so much. And there was there's a sense of um, what next going on. There can be a sense of trauma even with it. And we were so, so preoccupied. And also at the same time, our son was 10 years old, 8 years old. And I remember at one point my husband, by the way, he's over there, wave to the people, honey. Um, he, he said I was the poster child for the sandwich generation because here I was taking care of my mom and taking care of our son and, and trying to be all of it, trying to be all of it. I remember something happened. I wanted something, and I won't go into the detail, and Charlie said, you know, I don't think you have time. I think that you have so much going on right now. I think it might be really, really challenging for you. Would you consider not doing this at least right now? That made me very angry. I was so angry, so angry, in fact, that I gave him the silent treatment for three days. Three days. Now, here's the thing about the, the poison, and you actually drink it yourself. Because we were so busy and occupied taking care of my mom and my son and life and, and the house and bills and everything else that life requires of us and working for a living, three days of silent treatment, and this is not a statement about him, it's me, he didn't know I was doing it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Now, he's a really healthy, bound, healthy boundary kind of guy. So the fact that I was shooting these arrows of passive-aggressive anger at him, and he wasn't even having to duck, they just, they did not, he didn't have the bandwidth for it. He was being himself, loving and normal and natural, and, and you know, I, I, if he asked me a question directly, I would say, of course, or yes. You know, I didn't respond with, with angry profanity, I just did such a minimal participation in our marriage, you know, because I really wanted him to know. I wanted him to know, darn it. And he didn't know. <laughs> so, how far do you think we are all willing to take it? <laughs> At a certain point. You know, to be able to fast from that and to recognize, to stand back and say, wow, I did that. I did that. That's crazy. It was really crazy. And we were kind of going through some crazy times. And yet, once I was willing to let myself not be right, yes, you were right, enjoy the moment, once I was willing to agree, well, you know, he actually has got a really good point there, <laughs> this thing that I am thinking about doing and investing. I was going to raise chickens, okay? It just seemed like a good idea at the time. <laughs> I like fresh eggs. Um, but once I, like, stepped back and said, I don't have to have my way on this. If I get my way on this, it's going to kill me because <laughs> it's going to be really hard and there's too much going on. And, and he actually does know better you know, because he observes me and he knows how I can be in overextending myself. Not here now. You, you remember, <laughs> even though I'm teaching all those classes, I've, I've healed that. Um, but I have no idea where I was. But the whole thing is that when we can begin to be willing to release that part of us that, that wants to be right, that wants to judge, that wants to be angry, that wants to be justified, There's, that's the word. If we can give up that justification, then we actually do have the time, the energy, the love, 
the spiritual bandwidth to be the divine beings we're here to be. And all of that other stuff, that's what gets in the way of our divine expression. We think we're just holding on to do it because we want to get it right. We want everybody else, if they would just perform, if they just read my script, I sent it out, darn it, didn't they read it? If they would just get with my program, right? If they would just do what I know they should do. But here's the thing, none of us knows. All that we know is that we're here to express the highest we can, to express love, to, mm, as Ram Dass said, walk each other home. We are here to walk each other home. And if we can agree to atone and to release that stuff, we can walk, mm, what a glorious path we can walk together in harmony, in prosperity, in abundance. And here's the final part of my talk, because remember the title was Atonement, Forgiveness, and a Really Nice Brisket. If we are all together, walking together, there's enough brisket for everybody. There's enough brisket for everybody. And if you don't like the brisket, I promise I'll make extra potatoes. So I am so blessed that I get to be here with you, with you this day, and that we all get to set an intention, once again, for newness, for possibility, for once again knowing ourselves as God knows us, perfect, whole, complete, free, ah, magnificent. Doesn't that feel good? Magnificent. Baby, we're hot stuff. We are all hot stuff. Anyone forget that? I want you to remember it. Let's do that now in prayer. So we just breathe into this deeper awareness of get the hell out of that which has helped me from my blessings, from my joy, from my true knowing, so that love can lift me, so that love can lift us into the recognition that there is one life, one presence, one power, and it is God, it is spirit, it is that infinite great, great presence which has created and sustains the planets in their orbits which grows my fingernails for God's sake without me telling it, which keeps this world moving and, and rotating and breathing and creating. This is the truth. This is the truth. And we are all not just a part of it, not just a reflection or created in the image. We are it. We are each of it, the great it. One of, one with and one as. So from our shared divinity, our shared holiness, our shared sacredness, I speak my word now and know that within us we are receptive. We are receptive to that greater knowing that all of it, all fades to God, all fades to God when we know that we are the divine. We are the divine walking this planet and walking each other home. I know that this prayer touches hearts everywhere. And I know that this church touches people everywhere. And that we bless every aspect of it. We bless all paths to God. How glorious it is to know that we are one. We are one, we are one. Oh my God, we are one. We bless all paths to God, all churches, all synagogues, all temples, our mosques, all ashrams. All, all tents where someone who doesn't have a home right now might be resting their weary bones. We bless them knowing that that too is a path. It's a path to their sacredness. It's a path to knowing that right where they are, God is. That right where we are, God is. We dare to sing that song. We dare to dance that dance. And we dare to exfoliate from anything that would keep us from knowing that truth. And with a sense of profound gratitude and joy, we accept that it is so. So I release this word into spiritual law, knowing it is already so, and so it is. And I invite you to say with me, amen.
Amen. <laughs> so this is the time in our service for our affirmative giving. For those of you here in the sanctuary, you can drop off your donations at the end of service as you exit out. There'll be uh, boxes in the foyer where you can drop those off. Those of you watching us online, uh, different ways you can give. First of all, you can call the church office after service. We'll be here for about 15 minutes. You can give a donation uh, with uh, credit or debit card over the phone. That's 818-762-7566. You can go to our website, nhcrs.org forward slash give to get straight to our donation page. Or you can text the word give to area code 818-457-3419. And with that, let's just put our intentions, just be aware of our intentions of putting out love through these donations into the world. Hold our hands to our hearts. If we have our donations in hand, hold them to our hearts and say together, from the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you. So, as we wind down our service, we want to begin by um, saying thank you to everyone who's of service this evening. Uh, I love, now that we're in this hybrid mode, I can say thank you to practitioners Liz Racy, who is holding vigil out there in virtual land, and Gail Pollott, who is here in the sanctuary uh, holding vigil. So. <laughs> Thank you both. Out there in virtual land, also thank you to Missy Ariano for supporting us on Facebook Live. I miss seeing you, Missy. Come back. <laughs> uh, Zoom support out there. Brenda Jordan, who is our NHCRS host this evening. Alma Alvarez, who's our Zoom host. And uh, Ray Regan in Delaware, who's our Zoom associate. So uh, glad to have your support out there. Yes, <laughs> thank you for keeping us going. Here in the sanctuary, as always, to those who have uh, been supporting us, Terry and Colleen, who are here to usher us in and welcome us into the sanctuary. <laughs> to Adam, once again, thank you for making sure we're seen and heard up here. To our fabulous tech team, Doreen, Nikki, uh, Colleen is helping also with the media team, Blair, Nikki, love it. Thank you all. As for you, my dear, Margaret, <laughs> the diva, <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Sam, 
as always. Thank you. <laughs> um, Blair, did I acknowledge you also out there? In case I didn't, I see you. Thank you. <laughs> and, um, well, look, hello. <laughs> yeah. uh, so fun to be doing this with you. <laughs> Um, okay, and thank you to you, all of you who are here in person and who are watching us. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> See, you can't get rid of me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> thank you. So, um, as far as this wonderful, wonderful uh, musical support we had here tonight, Margaret's music is available on Margaret at margaretowens.com. So, uh, and you've got quite a bit of stuff up there. That's really impressive. A reminder again, ways to make donations of the phone. So we're here at the church office for 15 minutes. Uh, if you want to call in and make your donation, again, 818-762-7566. If you're here and you want to go out to the parking lot and call into the church office and make your donation, you can do that too. Um, <laughs> you could uh, go to our website, nhcrs.org forward slash give, and uh, that allows you not only to do a one-time donation, but you can set up recurring donations so you don't have to think about it. Uh, and you can text the word give to 818-457-3419. And we're reminding folks also, I just got my statement uh, today from Amazon. They send you periodic statements if you've been shopping on Amazon, uh, Amazon Smile. And if you've made our church a recipient of the donations, uh, we're listed as uh, Church of Religious Science North Hollywood. Then um, contributions go to the church. So I was happy that almost $100, just like that, kind of went to the church with me just not controlling myself and shopping on Amazon. <laughs> we should have a contest. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> to see who can raise more money by more shopping. By more shopping on Amazon. That's okay. responsible, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay. But, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, let's see. What else do I need to let you know about? Um, prayer with a Practitioner is available. For those of you in sanctuary, if you want prayer with a practitioner, just come forward after the service, and uh, we're happy to pray with you. You can also drop off prayer requests uh, in the prayer uh, boxes in the foyer if you just want us to um, pray or maybe call you later to connect with you for prayer. Um, on Zoom, you can connect with a practitioner and be put in a private breakout room for one-on-one -on -one prayer. You can email your prayer request to prayer at nhcrs.org or call into the church office and option four on our phone menu allows you to leave a voicemail message with your prayer request. And please remember, we check those every evening and send those out to our practitioners. So. Um, I'm on the list, I see those prayers coming in, and it's really, it's such a joy to be able to come together as a practitioner community and support you in consciousness, so please take advantage of that. Next Wednesday evening, I guess we're back on. <laughs> uh, meditation at 6.50, service at 7 p.m., and Reverend Sidney's topic is active faith from need to seed. Prayer responds not to need, but to the seed. Effective prayer means framing your need as a plantable seed that can flourish and grow in joy, wholeness, and abundance. Learn how to till the soil of active faith. You are your demonstration. And Reverend Sidney will be joined by the incredible Reverend Mark. <laughs> See you there. <laughs> uh, Living a Course in Miracles. Uh, this group facilitated by our practitioner Jeannie Laporte meets tomorrow. Um, that's the 16th, Thursday, from 7.15 to 9.15. Uh, Jeannie is just wonderful at leading this group. You don't have to have uh, participated in prior Course in Miracles uh, classes. Each one is self-contained, so everyone is welcome. 
The youth church is back open, so we're welcoming youth of all ages at our 9.45 a.m. service on Sundays. Feeding the Homeless, our love and kindness ministry, will be feeding the homeless this Sunday. If you're interested in contributing to that, uh, go to our website and you can uh, get more information about it. Rising Strong Workshop is coming up soon with Reverend Sydney. That'll be not this coming Sunday, but the fo- uh, Saturday, but the following, uh, the 25th from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. It's gonna be an in-person only workshop. It's inspired by Brene Brown's book, Rising Strong. And Reverend Sydney's workshop will be a practical and spirit-led experience to lovingly explore the stories we tell we sell ourselves about why we can or can't, are or aren't. And so what a great um, topic to explore, and it's $30. The Essential Learners Homes, also with Reverend Sydney, begins on Tuesday. Uh, It'll be for 10 Tuesdays, beginning September 28th. And it's from 6.30 to 9.30 p.m. And this class will be taught both virtually, so it'll be on Zoom and in person. And students in this class gain a holistic awareness of Ernest Holmes' thoughts and come to see that many of their questions about applying the science of mind were addressed by our founder himself at one time or another. So um, it's a great class. It's uh, a prerequisite if you're interested in going on to prac training at some point. Cost is $245 if paid in full and uh, 270 if it paid in two installments of $135. And just a reminder also that we're inviting people to join in the fun of uh, helping to host our services on Facebook Live. It's relatively easy, it's a lot of fun, and if you're interested, please call the church office and let us know. And uh, just for those of you who are connecting virtually still, our Zoom virtual patio that continues every service that we give here. It'll be before, about 20 minutes before, and then people can hang out afterwards to stay connected. And our Zoom meditation continues every Monday through Saturday from 8 to 8.15 a.m. And so any of this that you want to, what did he say about that again? Just go to our website, nhcrs.org, to get the information. And you can also sign up for our weekly e-blasts and monthly newsletters. Um, With that, I think I'm complete up here. Reverend Sidney will be coming up to do a benediction. I have a special request, because I don't know, Margaret, uh, how many times we'll be on again on pulpit. So together, when we do our final chant, could we maybe have Cher come forward and do okay. Okay, good. So we'll get we'll get double diva evening. <laughs> you gotta hear it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Half breed. <laughs> All right. Let's just breathe in the joy of this place, of this moment, of this wonderful experience that we call the North Hollywood Church of Religious Science. Knowing that we are the divine. We are the divine and glorious expression. We are a celebration of God, each of us. We know it for ourselves, we know it for each other. And as we move out into the world this evening, we know it for whom everyone who crosses our path or even remotely crosses our mind. We live in this blessing. We live in this place of peace. We live in this joy. Because we know that God is all there is and all we are is God. It is so, it is so, it is so. So with a sense of gratitude and knowing, with a sense of great possibility and excitement, We simply all ah, invoke a sense of, yep, that's it. That's how it is, baby. I'm on my way. I'm hot stuff. I love the world. And so it is. And I invite you to say with me, amen. around 